Welcome to our course, a Building Data Science Project. And in this part of our course, we are going to continue with our project, which is all about um, credit scoring. So just let me take you to some reviews of what we did in the past. Of course, we um, downloaded or installed or imported different packages we are going to use for this project. And we have actually done um, the checking of data quality. And we have also corrected some of the things that we need to correct, such as, for example, these different things you could see in here. Where is it? Okay, these ones. So you could see that if we are going to use these things, then something would be wrong with our data analysis because they would not be included and they would cause a lot of problems along the process because um, they would create some kind of um, confusion in our code so we need to clean them for example um, there are these uh, strings like this one and uh, blanks this one too um, the uh, hyphen or dash as we, we call it and also this one so these things should be deleted so that um, we can possibly or we can actually make different analysis levels of analysis so this time, what we're going to do is that we're going to do um, the exploratory data analysis. So with that, we need to um, separate first the data into two. We have the categorical data and the numerical data. So how to do that? We are going to use the select D types um, function. And then with that, we just include the object because, of course, that's categorical. And for the numerical, we just, of course, use the select a D types function and we include just the number because it's the numerical data or numerical features. So let's first dive in with the categorical data. So, okay, first we are going to execute this one. All right. So next thing is that we are going to do um, the describe a function. So here we would be able to understand the statistical description of categorical data so what can we find in here is the count the unique or how many unique values we have in that particular categorical variable then what's the top um, value for that particular feature and then the frequency the frequency of this top value so we have one two three four five six six categorical columns or features we have in our data set and for occupation, we have 15 values. Credit mix, we have three. The payment min, payment of min amount or the minimum amount is three. The payment behavior is six. And the credit, or changed credit limit is 3480. And the payment of min amount is two. So for the occupation, we can see that the developer occupation has the top with 6,443 um, frequencies or frequency. Then the credit mix is standard, is the top one. The payment is yes. And for this payment behavior, um, we can see that the high spent medium value payments has the most number of um, appearance in our data set. And the changed credit limit, we have 11.5. It has um, 70 frequency. And the payment of minimum amount we have yes um which is the top and two thousand five or twenty five thousand five hundred fifty nine okay so with that um we would like to really understand the features for its categorical column or categorical feature and with that we need to do the value count function for each categorical column so what we do here is that um, we use the for loop so for each categorical column for cat call in df cat because this time our data frame is now called a df cat here if you could remember so and then we print um, each um, value counts for each particular feature then after each one, we print this one. Okay, let's execute this one. So now you can, we can see the different um, values and its corresponding numbers for each value of each categorical column. 
So first with the occupation, we have these ones. One, two, three, four. So 15, of course it's 15. And we can see the order, which is in descending order of the frequencies of each value. Okay, so we have the developer, the first one, the, the lawyer, the second, the architect is the third, and the writer here is actually in the lowest bottom. For, then for the credit mix, we have actually three of unique values. We have a standard good and bad. The standard is um, the highest one. Then for the payment of pin amount, we have um, four, or I mean three, yes, no, and then NM. Then... Um, yes, as already discussed here, is the highest one. For the payment behavior, we have one, two, three, four, five, six behavior types. Those spent large value amounts, we only have um, 5,000, one, two, three. And notice, spent value, medium value payments, and small value payments, these are the two, um, shall we say, at more or less similar in value, um, in frequency. 12,445 for the medium and the smaller one is um, 396. So we can s actually see and say that um, for this particular part of our analysis that most of our clients are actually um, in the medium value payments and the small value payments. They would actually constitute more than 50%. Of the changed credit limit um, we actually have a lot, just imagine 3,480, but later on we are just going to have the top 20 of them. Then the payment of mean amount, um, we have the yes or no, and at least the yes is 25,000. Okay, and this is actually good. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to um, visualize them so that we can properly see um, the landscape of our uh, credit scoring. Let's start first with the occupation. So what we do here is that um, we order the occupation based on their value counts. Um, and that is in um, descending order. This one, order is equal to DF occupation. So this would automatically give us the descending order, which means from the highest to the lowest. So the developer has the highest um, count. So this is good. I mean the developer, yeah, the developer, then followed by uh, lawyer, actually, if you're going to um, look at this one from the lawyer going to the the writer. Okay, shall we see the writer for all of them? The disparity actually is not that great. Okay, for this part, going to this part of this visual. So just the developer is um, very striking because it has um, a very big gap between the developer and the lawyer and even for all the rest of them. And for the credit mix, let's see. So here again, we ordered that, uh, this one from the highest to the lowest. So for the standard, so that means that our most of our clients have um, the credit mix or they just get the standard um, credit for, for whatever um, need they have for the contract. Then for the payment behavior, we have this one and again we um, order this one from the highest to the lowest and then let's execute this one all right so notice this one for the high spend medium and the small one um the disparities they're actually very similar but not very noticeable or noticeable is the third to the sixth place because they are also somewhat similar for this one and then this one the third and the fourth are more or less similar. And the fifth and the sixth are actually uh, more or less similar too. The disparity is not that, the difference is not that um, big. Then um, here, so as you could see, we have, let's go back to this one first. So we have, where is it? Okay, this one. We have 3,480. So what we want to know here for this part is that we just would like to get the top 20. Okay, because um, for the rest, if you could see here, we only have one, one, one. So I think it's just um, better to just see the top 20. So let's have this one for the changed credit limit. Let's see which um, credit limit has the most number of um, clients. So we have 11.5 to 
0.49. So these ones have the top 20 most number of um, clients. Okay. Now for the, for the payment of min um, n amount here, just the same as the former, we only do, or we also do the ordering of the values, the value counts from the highest to the lowest. Okay. So let's execute. So yes is 25,000 and of course no is the 17,000. So um, using this one, using these visuals, we would be able to have an overview of the business or how is the business um, processing or progressing up to a certain point. So in our next lesson, we are going to have the analysis of our um, numerical features. And of course, we're going to combine the numerical features with our categorical features. If you want to know more about this channel, just click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.